So today we are looking at grasslands and grassland habitats of principal importance or hoppies and how to identify at least one of them and give an indication of where you might find others. This is Melverley Meadows near Whitchurch, one of the Shropshire Wildlife Trust reserves and uh, in terms of identifying what sort of grassland it is, in Shropshire at least it's relatively straightforward unless you are on a hillside um, in which case you'd have acid grassland where the, the soil is quite acid in nature or on the, the Wenlock edge or the uh, Oswestry uplands where the base rock is limestone so the soil is uh, calcareous in nature with a high pH you're probably in neutral grasslands as it's called where the pH is on and around neutral pH 7 and some of these, not many of them these days are rare habitats and they're called lowland meadows and we'll uh, have a look at, look, a look at the species that you're looking for in order to identify if you're in a lowland meadow or not. So in terms of a representative area, try not to choose an area in a gateway because there'll be different species there. Don't specifically look for anything that you think might be rare like orchids. Just choose a spot that's representative in the field or part of a field and then roughly measure out a 4 by 4 metre square which is roughly 4 paces by 4 paces and within that just pick one leaf of any broadleaf that you think looks different from any other broadleaf. So what you're trying to do is to get an indication of how many broadleaf species, not grasses, just broadleaf species, that you've got in that 4x4. Four four. So remember, it's just broadleaf species, not grasses. You've got quite a few grasses here, but I'm pretty sure you can all tell a grass from a broadleaf species. I'm going to pick some broadleaves now, one leaf from each plant, to give you an idea of what you're looking for. So that one, for example, quite different from that one. So we've picked, spent about a minute or two picking one broad leaf, leaf from each of the species that are in our four by four. Remember we've focused on the broad leaves, not the grasses, and this is what we found. And it is literally a question of counting them you should be able to see that they're all different. Some of them look quite similar. These two look quite similar. That one looks quite similar to that. But they're different enough to say, yeah, I think they're actually different species. And if you look closely, that should be evident. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that, in a four by four, is really a, uh, an outstanding level of, of broadleaf diversity. So having said this, the one caveat is there are certain broadleaf species that we don't want to include, we want to exclude because they're more invasive if you like and they're actually undesirable species and they're relatively straightforward. You'll probably know them by their, their general names. So that's thistles, docks and nettles. If your broadleaf species that you've got in your 4x4 includes any of those, don't pick those, especially nettles, they'll sting you. And just leave those as not counted and that is one way to identify it as a likely hoppy, a habitat of principal importance and because it's a, a, a lowland neutral grassland the term that's used is lowland meadow. This is an example of lowland meadow hoppy. One way of doing it is diversity of broadleaf species. The other way of doing it which gives you a good indication is indicator species and we'll look at that next. So as well as the number of broadleaf species, you've also got certain species that are called indicators and they're indicators of two things. One is of neutral grassland itself, but more than that, they're indicators of high quality neutral grassland, biodiverse neutral grassland, that is the lowland meadow hoppy. Now, I've chosen five of these that are, I think are reasonably obvious to identify and we'll go through those now and show you what they look like. The first one that we've got here is yellow rattle or hay rattle and this is a semi-parasitic species and it's got these lovely yellow flowers with the puffed up bit at the bottom at this time of year 
and then the flower is lost afterwards and you just get this bit turning brown and rattling from the seeds inside and that's why it's called yellow rattle or hay rattle and this is a very good indicator of lowland meadows. So another indicator is common spotted orchid. Common spotted orchid is a lovely plant with a frilly pink flower, often with uh, reddish or uh, maroonish veins. And as the name suggests, spots on the leaves, purple spots. Now, they do hybridize with other orchids and it can get quite confusing, but effectively, if you've got an orchid that looks vaguely like this, even if it's not pure common spotted orchid, it's close enough and it's a good indicator of a, uh, a rich, botanically rich meadow. So another indicator is a small plant called bird's foot trefoil and this is it here. It's called bird's foot, because, well, bird's foot trefoil because A, it is three leaves together, so trefoil, foil being leaf, as you can see roughly here, three leaves and three leaves together, a bit like a clover but more elongated. But also when these flowers turn into fruits, they're like little sticks that stick out, so like a bird's foot. But the other thing to look out for is as well as being yellow when they're fully open, when they're half open or closed, they're reddish colour, and that gives it its other common name of eggs and bacon. So that might be a way of remembering it. You've got the yellow of the egg yolk and the red of the bacon that goes with it. So eggs and bacon or bird's foot trefoil, another one of the indicators of lowland meadow hoppies. So another plant that's an indicator of lowland meadows is common knapweed. Now we have an example here, but it's not in flower as you can see, and that makes it slightly trickier to identify. When it is in flower, it's got a purple thistle-like flower, or the plant itself is, is thornless, it's not spiky, so you can do this to it with, with impunity. Um, and that flower is a real giveaway, but the leaves themselves are toothed, so are reasonably distinctive. So if you're confident that it's common knapweed, great. If you're not confident, then do pop back. It's normally flowering um, mid-June into July or often into August. So another indicator is a little plant called meadow vetchling. So there's a couple of things to look for when you're trying to identify meadow vetchling. One is the actual leaves. They're in pairs, very obvious pairs, and often they'll have a little tendril sticking out the end. So look for that and look also for this little um, stem of flowers. They're yellow flowers. These are just coming out and they're pea-like. So I hope you can see there's four or five of them just clustered together at the end, um, each one a little yellow pea-like flower. So hopefully you've got an idea now of how to identify a lowland meadow habitat of principal importance. You can essentially do it in two basic ways. Count the number of broadleaf species that you've got in a four by four square. Um, you don't need to identify them, you just need to know that they're different. Or look for those five indicator plants that hopefully you've got a better idea of how to identify now. If you get stuck, there's help out there. There's books, there's your local friendly botanist, and there are apps for your smartphone that will all help you to make sure that you identified the plants correctly.